to squeeze into today's video. I'm gonna kind of take you on a rapid fire tour. There are so many things that I want to show you on our place. There's a lot of neat stuff happening. Let's get started now. You've seen some of our sunflower patches. I don't know though if you've really seen kind of the scope of our sunflowers. So here's one patch. Here's another patch at the side of the house. And then of course you've seen the sunflowers in our garden. Here they are. We have sunflowers to pick as many as we want. Japanese beetle on an apple tree. Some of the apple trees are not doing so great. I think this one's doing the worst. It's grown about 12 inches this year, but a lot of the leaves are dried. Looks like caterpillars have been chewing on it. And then it just has some yellowing leaves. So I have some reading and research to do to try to figure out what's up with that tree in particular. Other trees, in fact, most of them are doing awesome. This one's grown, uh, I think two feet this year and most of the leaves look perfect. The first tree I showed you, the diseased one, is a Cox's orange pippin. It's an old variety and I'm not real surprised it's doing poorly. It's not known especially for its disease resistance. The one that's doing great is called a Mac Free, and it's known to be very disease resistant. We opened up a big section to the chickens on the outside of our pasture fence, and we also let the goats and the cow in here. The goats are coming in here and still working on clearing some brush for us, and the chickens are also able to go out into the pasture. Look at what the goats have done to this section of woods here. I'm gonna to try to show you a video from the other day of what this looked like before. And then some of them have actually gone out into this wood section, and that's good because they're actually gonna be forced to go out and forage and find some interesting stuff. So here's the view before the goats from above this section of woods, and now after the goats. Look at that, look what they've done. It's just amazing. Mama Duck is doing amazing. She is fiercely protective, and her ducklings are the cutest things in the world. There they go, little ducklings. All eight of them are still living. They've made trips all the way down into the pasture. They were way down in the pasture when we let them out this morning. They seem to be doing really well, and Donald seems to have actually taken a liking to them, and he seems a little protective, actually. Did you notice Donald has a new coat? He molted recently, and he's just a beautiful white color again. Right above the chickens, there's a little bird nest and you can hear the babies up there. We have a really weird situation in here. You all know Kai and Kai. They both have the same name because we've never been able to tell the difference. They teamed up and they hatched out some random eggs they were on and they have one looks like one baby Kai, and then they have one baby black Australop, which they've adopted. And they both are under the strong impression that they're the mother of these two babies, and they don't seem to have any conflicts of interest. They will both sit on them, they both protect them, and they are fierce. Look at them, <laughs> they're like, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> They will not let anything near the babies. All right, I'll leave you in, ouch, I'll leave you in peace. Go, 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 go. If they had spurs, look at them. They're vicious. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> I'm leaving, I'm leaving, don't worry. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> this Copamaran who is broody also she thinks she, she's the mom, it looks like it. She's trying to get that one to go underneath her. You better get back in there, little chick. Oh no, the little chick is out. Here, let's catch that little chick. Go back in, little chick. Go back in, little chick. Go back to your mamas. Hopefully, those three will be broken of their broodiness now and actually start laying again. Out through the goat door, into the pasture, and look who's here. Miss Dolly. Good golly, Miss Dolly. How are you? Good to see you. You're looking fine today. Dolly has obviously not calved yet. We do think she's coming closer just by looking at some of the physiological signs. Brianna made some new fly spray today. She bought all the ingredients yesterday and mixed it all up. So there are flies on her, but this is nothing like it was this morning and yesterday. Flies are just really bad. 
and I'm glad she's gotten a little bit of relief. The pasture out here is growing up slowly. We put her on it immediately after cutting it for hay, so it's been slow to recover from being cut. This is actually the result. Actually, what is this? This is a bunch of volunteer squash. I don't know why she didn't eat those. Um, or gourds from, there's the shell from the gourd. <laughs> when a grazing animal has a large area to graze, they can pick exactly what they want. The result is areas like this, where this was caused by manure, you see the manure there. And so it grows up green, but they don't like to eat there because there's manure. And places like this, all the grass has been eaten around it, and then this weed has been left because <laughs> cows don't like to eat weeds. So what happens is, the plants that the cows love, the plants that you want in your pasture actually get suppressed and the plants they hate, the weeds that you don't want in your pasture actually grow up and get stronger. Over years, this can be detrimental to pasture. Why are we doing this? It's because she needs as much grass as out here right now. Um, and as it grows up, my hope is that we can start rotating and also we can get them out on that back pasture soon for a couple weeks. Four feet from me. Wait, Don't worry, she won't leave you. Bree's working on a project out here at the front of the house. She is making a bed for her beloved lavender. lavender plants. Here's a little lavender plant. Lavender likes really dry areas, and so this spot is perfect. Because this area is planted right above a wall here and on a hill, it's very well drained, so the plant should do well here. What are you doing, Gracie? I'm going to make a doll. Oh, what kind of doll? A lab doll. Oh, cool. Can I look at your pattern? Very nice. And you look very pretty, by the way. And me. And you. Butterfly. Did you see the butterfly? In the garden now, smashing a few of these little bean beetles. They are just eating up these beans, the volunteer half runners. Interestingly, the purple beans, their bush beans, they actually have done really well in comparison. Here's the flower and the bean is coming right out of the flower before the flower's fallen off. There's actually some more significant beans on the volunteer half runners, here's some. I would say we'll be picking beans in about a week. Sweet corn is tasseling over here or starting to tassel. Such a beautiful thing and a beautiful smell. And then on the other side, the glass gym popcorn is not tasseling yet. And neither is the Hickory King. It's not tasseling and we planted it actually about a week to two weeks before the sweet corn. The reason that it's not tasseling yet is because it's just a longer season. I think if I remember it's 110 days or so to, from planting to harvest on the Hickory King and it's closer to 80 days on our sweet corn. Look how tall this stalk of corn is above my head. Way high. These stalks will get quite a bit higher before they're mature. The Hickory King is known for being tall and strong. I'm constantly impressed by these comfrey plants here. They're so big, so full, and really healthy. Today I'm gonna harvest some of it and throw it into the goats and the cow. Moira knife, I haven't talked about the Moira knife for a while. It's M-O-R-A, Moira, made in Sweden. These are one of my favorite knives. If you don't have one and you need a knife, get one. They cost about $15. Excellent steel. They come with an extremely sharp edge. They're easy to keep sharp. They have an extremely tough plastic handle. Very affordable, very functional. Highly recommended. Check our Amazon links. So I've cut these two plants off at the ground and look at just this mass. This is a couple pounds of greens here. Comfrey is very high in protein. The cool thing about the plants is that they will regrow as many as three times in one season. So you can just get a large volume out of one plant. Come on, Dolly. Mm. 
Here they come. So it's been about five minutes and they've cleaned up uh, 90% of the comfrey. I'm sure they'll come back and finish the rest. Raven the teenage goat is still snacking on comfrey there. On the evening of a day where we had several good hours of rain, I thought it would be a good time to honor the time-honored tradition of burning brush. Can I put this thing for you? Yeah, throw it in. Okay. Wow. Wow. I try not to burn. No, sir, that's my stick. I need that's my fire stick. Boys, they're wild about fire, aren't they? Hey, buddy, get back with bare feet. There may be coals there. Generally, I'd much rather pile brush in areas where it can break down and add to the soil. Sometimes though, fire's a tool that is really actually just helpful to use. This spot here, I cleared brush the other week, but I had a little leftover brush pile and I wasn't gonna have time to get out of here. It was, had already killed some of my grass and I said, hey, I'm gonna burn it. It's fun to burn brush. No, my boy, no. Who could focus in? Right, boy. Please don't touch the camera. Who could focus in? Were you going to throw the camera in the fire? <laughs> so that was definitely another great day on the homestead. Miss Joy's in here, cutting up yellow squash from the neighbors. There's hamburgers cooking. Fine looking wife. Squash! <laughs> and french fries in the oven, but not homemade tonight. I usually make them homemade. And squash! Sounds delicious.